So I looked at several methods of uh, soldering the pins up onto the board. There's there are instructions here, which basically have you drop the pins through, use Kapton tape to hold the pins in place, flip the board over, and solder from that side of the board. And that may actually make the most sense because it greatly reduces the risk of getting solder down into the little hole in the pin that the uh, tube pin drops into. Uh, there's a note someplace in the instructions that talks about when you drop the pins into the holes, they tend to self-center. And that's correct. I can feel them kind of self-center when they drop down in. I'm a... So I've got the board held pretty stationary here in a clamp. I've got a little box here full of the pins. Of course, I'm working around cameras and mounts and everything here. And all I'm doing is picking these up one pin at a time and just dropping them down into the little hole. And they drop down in pretty well and seem to self-center. I'm thinking about trying to solder from this side. I don't know that I can get a good enough solder joint for that to work. I'm going to solder one. And that way if I screw up and end up getting solder down into the, the pinhole, I can always remove it and try it again. Sorry, I've got to see a cables hanging around the uh, soldering pencil here for some reason. Oh, the lab is a mess. The lab is always a mess. Let me get this tip cleaned up well and retinned. I'm confident that the uh, JVC pencil here will have plenty of power. Even with a small tip to do this, this is a, a fantastic tool. You've heard me talk about it in other videos. So all I'm going to do is kind of get down here and just add a little ring of solder. And let that set up. And I'm going to tack several of these since I have no problem avoiding the hole in the center that the tube pin goes into. I don't know if this is flowing through to the other side of the board. It probably isn't. I don't have pins in every hole at this point. I've only got a few pins in place to play with here. Now that one tried to get solder up above down into the hole. thought I had one more pin in here. I guess I don't. These solder joints here look pretty cold. They're pretty gray. I don't think that worked really well. Well, you know, I've got... Okay, solder. On this side, it's not as shiny and bright as I'd like it to be. Get this on camera. And that's a little bit tight, but actually not half bad. I think I'm going to solder this one board up this way, just kind of letting gravity center these for me. A couple of them look like they're crooked. It's hard to tell. But I'm going to go ahead and solder these up this way. And we'll go from there. Worst case is I'll throw Kapton tape over this anyhow, flip the board over. And we'll uh, solder it from the other side. Get some pins here. Picked up and dropped in. These pins are tiny and thus rather fiddly. You can see there that didn't. I wonder if tweezers would work better for this. Do I have a pair of tweezers hanging there? I don't.
The pins are very tiny, as you can obviously see. And of course, these big old fingers of mine make working with a very small object such as these pins difficult. But you know, if I can do this with my big huge hands, you should be able to do it as well. Key in my mind to putting something like these pins in is stability. The uh, clamp here I've got the uh, board in is nice and stable. The joints are tightened down well. There's no real movement to it. And that makes a huge difference. I'm not fighting it moving around. This is a case where I'd never try to do this with the board loose. I certainly wouldn't try to do it on the little turntable I have down there. Uh, that turntable really only exists on my bench as an aid to photography. It's actually quite a nuisance at times. A couple of viewers have commented about it. I'd you know, throw that thing away. Um, and of course, I've got one here that's going to be stubborn. These pins are tiny. If I was to drop them, I would lose the entire box. I only poured a small amount of pins into the container here. The rest are sealed up tightly in the bag. Uh, that way, if I jar this little container, flip it over, lose it or whatever, I don't lose all the pins. Let me put on the uh, other glasses. And we will continue to walk our way around the board here. Again, the JVC makes a huge difference, the thermal handling capability of it are excellent. I'm trying to not actually touch the pen directly with the soldering pencil, but I'm getting very close to it. If I touch the pen, I will shift it down in the hole, and I can't rely on when I release or remove the soldering pencil, gravity pulling it back down in flush. It is rather fiddly. I do see once it's heated up, uh, capillary effect and gravity do pull the solder down well. Looked like it got soldered down into the uh, hole the uh, tube pin goes into. Oops, I disturbed that pin. Hopefully, it fell back down in flush. I'm not sure how well you're able to see this on camera. I should probably clean the tip. You can also see here that I've got both hands resting on the rig, on, on the clamp that is holding the board in place. You know, both hands are, are solidly down on it, and it's tightened up well enough that I've got really good uh, support here. And that helps tremendously with being able to be nice and steady when doing this kind of work. My hands aren't floating in the air. Ooh. Okay, that one obviously is a problem. I think I'm going to need to uh, come up with a little something. 
I can use to push the pins down flush. That pin definitely jumped up out. So we'll reflow the solder around it. That actually made for a much better looking solder joint. I may reflow all these and just hold the pin down in tight. Of course, at this point, the screwdriver is stealing heat from the pin. Whether this is a good idea or not is debatable. A couple of the pins are not as flush as I would have liked. You know, I bought a few extra pins, but not enough. I can waste a bunch of them. I know my hand's in the way of seeing what I'm doing here. I'm just using this small Phillips to apply downward pressure to the pin. That one still looks odd sitting there like it's crooked and it was the pin must have stuck slightly to the screwdriver when I picked it back up which means I should leave a little more dwell time with the little screwdriver after reflowing it to give the solder a bit of extra time to solidify and catch the pin I'm only going to do the one board using this method. I will get the board fully assembled and tested. Uh, before I commit to the other boards. Sorry, I'm trying to focus here and sometimes I can't talk and focus at the same time. With a little bit of reflowing, the solder joints look a little bit nicer. Hopefully, I'm not too much shadow here, and you can see the back side of the board. I do see a pin that is crooked and that is the pin on S5 I'm going to touch it again okay which pin exactly is that one right there. Just a little bit of solder on the tip. And that's this guy. Didn't feel like the pin moved. And maybe it didn't. Yeah, that looks better. So I don't really want to be doing this too much. The tube is. Attempting to uh, work its way down in there. That is 
very tight. You know, I think I mentioned in the previous video that with the original sockets for these, the pins float, where this is a very one pin over here which is really stiff and it may just be a bent pin on the tube oh wow not particularly happy with that there it comes I do see some pins still on the tube that are definitely bent We worked on straightening some of these up yesterday. I'm not so much flexing the pin as just trying to crush the pin a bit. I really don't want to flex the pin too much with the pliers for fear it'll break the glass on the tube. as happy with that as I'm going to be. Although I do see a few that are still crooked. Hmm. And the crooked ones are a problem. I may end up putting this down onto a hard surface and then heating from the backside and pressing down hard. just a piece of a uh, cast stone or ceramic of some kind oh it's missing a foot that I picked up ages ago that sometimes is really useful for soldering up against uh, or for doing you know work that has a lot of heat to it that may actually be really useful here it's pretty flush and walking through this board from the backside Missing the foot doesn't make it easier. I'll try to get somewhat up underneath the camera here. I'm going to see if doing this on the back side and pushing. Ah, uh, yes, I saw that pin rotate and I believe stand up much square. That one I actually touched with the pencil and shifted it. This one is way out of alignment now that I see it from this angle. Yeah, I think this is very much helping to straighten these up. So gravity wasn't necessarily enough here. Yep, I saw that one pop and straighten up. As did that one. Yeah, I'm going to be much happier with this. You know, maybe I didn't have the board level enough in the clamping rig. This does kind of take me to the capped on tape. Maybe the best method. Oh, that one shifted all over the place. I dealt with enough pressure on the board. Oh, 
I will use the uh, clamping rig to hold the, the board stationary while I load the pins. And then I think I'll tape and flip over and solder from the back side. It does seem to be That one did not straighten up well when it tried to fall out. We're going to have to come back to that one. Probably because that one was so far out, it kept this one from sitting flush. Yeah, I saw that move back around. Well, their instructions look like they were the best. Now that I see these from the back side here, and I'm walking around, I can see just how crooked they were. that is tremendously better. Yeah, that's not as difficult as it was before. So definitely, well, this is going to become a two-step process for pin insertion in the clamp. So it will be in the clamp, get the pins loaded, capped on tape, flipped over, and soldered from the back side just like their instructions here basically called out. Uh, the only downside for me is I only have a very narrow roll of capped on tape. You use capped on tape because it, it, it deals with high temperatures very well. If you just use like blue masking tape uh, it would melt very quickly the glue on it and you would have glue residue on the board and on the pin and if the glue residue got up into the, the, the hole that the tube pin goes into uh, that could be ugly to try to clean out but I'll be able to make this work I wish I had like some inch wide this is expensive tape but it does deal with high heats very well anyhow I'm going to uh, finish this up here, this uh, pin insertion, I'll move on a little bit later to stuffing the board, and then we'll test it. So after thinking about it a bit more, I think I'm going to go ahead and solder up a second board uh, using the Kapton uh, tape to capture the uh, pins before I go ahead and do the additional assembly on the board. And so we will have both methods in this same video. Of course this assumes I can pick up some of the pins and get them on the board. Of course there's a lot of pins to load. There's actually one pin, if I remember what I read, that doesn't need to have a uh, connection to the PCB. I don't remember which one. And of course that would reduce the stress on the tube a tiny amount. But I'm just going to go ahead and fully load all the, the pins. Of course getting a hold of these is a little bit tricky. I know I'm reaching through the field of shot here. Uh, that didn't work so well. 
and it's of course going to roll around. And of course, patience here is important. So this is just fiddly work. Good tools help. And again, I've only dumped a small number of the uh, pins into the little container there. I don't want to take a chance on losing them all by bumping it accidentally. And of course, seal it up the remaining ones. Uh, find the roll of Kapton tape. Let's see if I can get it to start here. And we will work on taping the pins down. course the tape folded back upon itself. And I've lost the edge. There it is. should hold all the pins captive. solder all these. I'm going to do this by flowing the solder and holding the board down firmly while the solder sets. Hoping that'll get me again good alignment of the pins and while trying to keep my fingers out of the uh, field of view with a camera. I really need to clean this surface. It's got little bits of solder stuck all over it. But it is a nice heat resistant surface for this kind of work. As I've said many times, good tools, patience, planning ahead rather than just diving in.
guess I should be talking here to fill in the video because watching me solder certainly isn't that exciting. All of these solder joints are a little dull, uh, which doesn't make me particularly happy, but that's just kind of what I'm ending up with. I've got my uh, JBC pencil here set to 350C. This is my typical soldering temperature. This one here, I will add a bit of additional solder to it. That one's a little light on the solder as well. Take a look at the pins, they all appear straight. tape. And because the capped on tape is very heat resistive, it doesn't leave residue behind. Those look good from this side. We can of course assume the alignment of the tube will be pretty good. And again I feel all the pins line up into the holes without too much stress. This is probably the method to use. I, th I think the instructions they supplied probably are the best ones to follow. Even though I used narrow, narrow capped on tape, you just saw me use four pieces to capture all the pins. I guess you could possibly, without the tape, put the pins in, support them all with a piece of paper, flip it over and see that would be difficult. I think I would have dropped pins out and slide out if you don't have capped on tape. Uh, but no, I'm pretty happy with, with the results of that. I think it actually turned out a little better than the one that I played with initially. I didn't have to do any realignment of pins. They look square to me. Uh, so really the next point will be to stuff a board or two out and I will do that in uh, the next video. I'll go ahead and end this video here uh, and we'll talk soon. Bye.